So now we'll finish off this lecture with a brief discussion of um, cancer stem cells and how these cell types can confound to some degree um, the treatment of cancers and then just discuss very briefly the idea of are we going to treat cancer overall. So, um, so firstly we need to think about the the notion of cancer stem cells. So if you think back to the earlier lectures we were discussing, well I was discussing um, colon cancer and we were discussing at a cellular level we have these villi that stick up with these crypts and that in the crypts you've got the stem cells and they're, they're giving rise to cells which are going up um, into the villi and so these cells are completely being replenished all the time okay from these cancers from these stem cells and you can get you know perturbed stem cells and we refer to them as cancer stem cells so when we're looking at cell populations within a cancer and within a patient not all the cells are the same type if you like so we, we so in this example here we've got um, stem cells that have picked up mutations and now we're referring to them as cancer stem cells these are prolifer proliferating very quickly giving rise to these transiently amplified cells which have a short lifespan in the body before they're removed and replaced by new cells so you've got this constant feeding from these cancer stem cells feeding to make these um, transiently amplified cells okay and typically this is normal we have cells that give rise to other cell types in the body that's that's how our bodies work but we're looking at now um, cancer in these stem cells so they, they still function to give these transiently amplified cells but all of these cells contain the genetic mutation that's contained within the stem cell okay so all of these have the mutations that is 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 present in the cancer stem cell so when you treat the patient with the drug you can think about um, <clears throat> if the treatment is going to target the um, transiently amplified cells because these are less accessible to the drug then effectively it looks as if the drug has been effective because after treatment you've knocked out all of these accessible transiently amplified cells but in the body you still have these cancer stem cells and then after a period of time these are going to give rise to that population of cells again it looked as if the cancer treatment was highly efficient but after a short period of time these cells that were managed to evade the drug because they're in a different part of the body you know they're, they're protected because of the structure of, of, of the organ then gave rise to new cells okay so it effectively looked like the treatment was good but actually it came straight back conversely you might have a drug that manages to get in and kill these cells so but because these cells are in a small amount you don't see much change in the overall effect of the of the drug because you've only killed a small population of cells and it takes a while before these transiently amplified cells naturally disappear but then they're not replaced so the cancer stem cells greatly complicate the analysis of results from following cancer treatment so if the candidate drug eliminates the stem cells while leaving the tumor cells intact it looks as if it was ineffective but then it will begin to shrink once the transient amplified cells normally senesce and die so that's what I was trying to say here if you target these ones because you've got this big population here it looks as if it wasn't successful but then these stop giving rise to these as these are removed from the body as part of normal biology they're not replaced okay but if you only target these transiently amplified cells but not the stem cells then even though it looks like it was successful after a period of time these cells will give rise to another population so you're back at this stage here so like I was saying even though the drug seemed to be unsuccessful because it only killed off a small population 
of cells, which were the cancer stem cells, it, it is considered to be um, unworthy. But in actual fact, it's been very successful because once those transiently amplified cells naturally um, are broken down, they're not replaced. Okay, so the cancer stem cells can confound the results of treatment. So you need to be aware of them and you need to take them into consideration when you analyze the effectiveness of the drug. So converse situation, as I've already described, is that the drug kills off the transiently amplified cells, but not the cancer stem cells. So the cancer shrinks quickly. It looks like it's been very successful, but because the stem cells are still there, they're going to then grow again and reform that growth. So we have to say that the inability to kill cancer stem cells, it's an acceptable limitation because it still has a profound effect on the development of the cancer, which may last for many months or years. Okay, And the success of Gleevec, um, it, it has been one of the, the, the validations of using rational drug design to fight cancer. And you know it's going to be highly useful for treating various types of cancers, particularly as we're able to design drugs for the different kinases and start to really um, get some good payback from our understanding of cell biology. So here's the question that needs to be asked, and I don't know whether I can answer it or not, is that are we going to be able to treat and cure cancer? Okay, so typically in the news media, cancer is treated as a single disease, and we're always hearing about treatments to cancer, okay? But in, in reality, and in what we've talked about with this idea of subtyping cancers into different categories and all of the different cancers of different organs, whether it be breast cancer or testicular cancer or a sub-cancer within, you know, lymphoma, you know, one of the subtypes, we've got hundreds and hundreds of diseases that are generically referred to as cancer. So effectively, we're looking at the treatment here of hundreds of diseases. Okay. Now, um, when we're trying to treat cancer, it's really important to be treating a specific type because different cancers are different. And if you're designing a drug, you've got to understand the group of cells that you're targeting. So good molecular diagnosis, such as we discussed using the, the gene expression arrays, have led to good um, methods of treating subcategories of cancers. So we're getting a lot more subcategories being defined, and therefore we will be able to hopefully treat these with a bit more certainty. And I guess the cure is that it's not going to be um, a cure for cancer overall, but it will be a series of small breakthroughs to cure the individual cancers. So there will be, hopefully, many small discoveries that will steadily reduce the overall death rates from what we call cancer. So hopefully we can finish on a positive note to say, given what we understand about molecular biology, we should be able to start to make more effective anti-cancer drugs. Okay, thank you.